Hi guys, welcome back to Kitchens 2 Worship Service Online. It's already the second week of March. I hope you guys are doing well. Well, before we get started, make sure you grab your water or use the bathroom and pause the video. If not, then grab your Bible, your sermon notes, and your um, pen for our service today and also the gratitude journal as well. So let's get ready. Let's start with prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful Sunday. It's already the second um, Sunday of March of 2021. Lord, we just ask for your spiritual guidance as we continue to be in transition. For some of us have been going back to school and hopefully, Lord God, during this summer, we will go back to church, God. But in the midst of that, Lord, will you prepare the church, will prepare all of us as we keep praying and as we keep seeking you, Lord. May we worship you today. May we seek your face. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's get started with worship. Let's stand up where you are. Hey, kids, too. We're so glad you guys are here um, together to worship with us. Uh, if you have someone next to you, tell them, hey, glad you're here. If you have your parents or your siblings, say, I love you, mom. Love you, dad. Love you, brother. Love you, sister. If you're by yourself, go ahead and give yourself a high five or a pat on the back, maybe. Pat on the back. So good that you're here. Oh, I love myself. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, so glad you guys are here, and let's get started.
Well, let's grab our gratitude journal for our offering time and let's write three to five things that you're grateful for for your family and some of us you know we're gonna be like oh that's so easy and someone's like i don't know <laughs> well it's a good time to be reminded of what god has provided and i know i asked you guys i think a couple of months ago to do the same so i'm gonna do some re repetitions on these things because we still need to remember um the things that we do many of our parents work hard so they're not home but you know be thankful for that because they are providing for your family they're providing for you so that they can feed feed you food or you know get good you know good um I guess books and materials that you need so and even though in the difficult times for family there's a um, something we can be grateful for so I really want you guys to really think about what you're grateful for whether it's your mom cooking for you and or if she's not because she works say thank you that my mom has a job so she can provide or my dad you know he works hard uh, whatever it may be my sister my brother you know 
Thank you that I'm the only child. Some of you guys are really thankful for that because that is a blessing, right? Thank you for my dog. So there's a lot of things, my aunt or my uncle or my grandma, my grandpa. So I just want us to be thankful for the good things that we are blessed with, even if there's difficult times in our family, even though there's difficult moments in our family. Let's look to God and what we are thankful for. My family was definitely not perfect. We had our struggles, but you know what? Because of that, I actually depend on God a lot. And I used to pray a lot. And because of my family and because of those difficult times, actually, that's how my faith grew. That's when I knew that the object of my faith can only be in Jesus, that I couldn't depend on anything else. And my parents and my family, they needed God as well. So for me, I'm actually really thankful. And it's easy to say now because I was in the past, but you know, my, I guess my encouragement to you guys is to see that wisdom that even during the hard times, you have Jesus with you and you can always pray for your parents. You can always pray for your family. And I think because of that, my faith grew in God more because I needed him. I needed him for myself and I needed him for my family or for my siblings, you know, so it actually helped me grow in God. So I'm really thankful for that. So I hope you guys spend a few minutes thinking about what you're grateful for in your family family in the good times and also in the bad times so once you're done with that we're going to end uh, with the offering song living hope
Let's put our hands together and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful Sunday. As we move to a time of offering and worship, I pray that you may open our hearts to you, Lord, and that we may give all to you and worship you. May this time and the offering that we give you be used to bless and glorify our kingdom. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sunny Teacher, for your offering prayer. Thank you for all the teachers, for our ministry, for praying for us, for um, volunteering or doing whatever you can for us. We're so grateful for you guys. And another uh, quick announcement is it's also Leah Kim's birthday. I missed her name for the month of March. So happy birthday to you. And thank you guys. If you email me or let me know if I do miss you, please let me know. I don't want to do that. Some informations are kind of lost in our ministry. So if there's been some gaps there, we'd love for you guys to let us know. Also, guys, um, we are planning our Easter VBS since it's already March and it's in the first week of April, April 2nd to to the fourth, so Good Friday to Easter Sunday, we're gonna do this VBS online, and we're so excited. It's called Easter Mission, and it's gonna be really fun. And um, I hope you guys join us. It's gonna be really special because it's a time where we really think about what Jesus has done for us and His power and victory over sin and death. So register next week, and also at the end of March, we're gonna have a VBS box pickup. So I hope you guys uh, get to get that box as well. So I'm so excited and I hope you guys join us for Easter VBS. And today we will have Zoom at one o'clock. I hope you join us. If you haven't been able to come, don't worry, we do miss you. And please join us anytime, any, anywhere <laughs> that you can. And don't feel bad, just join us anytime. It's always good to see you guys, but we do miss those that haven't been able to come. And you are in our prayers and in our thoughts. So please join us today at one o'clock. Also, let's continue our Bible reading plan. It's so important that we be in the Word during the season. And, it be, and it's really for habit, guys. It's not so that we're going to become a good Christian. I mean, it is going to help us grow in God and it's going to help us follow Jesus. But I just want you to know that through studying the Word, it really gives us a good habit that we need the Bible. And the Bible helps us to know that this is the truth. You guys, you cannot say you don't believe in God because I don't know if it's the truth or not if you never read the Bible with the Holy Spirit. Some people have read the Bible, but did they read it with humble hearts? Did they read it with the Holy Spirit filled in their hearts? So 
when you read the Bible, sometimes it's very confusing, boring, or frustrated, whatever those times that can be, guys. But then sometimes it can be refreshing. It can be such a good reminder that God is in control of all things. And it's a blessing. It could give you peace. And I just pray that as you're reading the Bible, you ask for the Holy Spirit to come into your heart as you read it, and that God will speak to you as you're reading it, and that you learn what the Bible says. Not just learn from me, but also learn as you spend time with God. Amen? Amen. Well, let's get started, and let's open up our Bible to Acts chapter 11. And we're going to continue um, just people in the Bible, in the book of Acts, how the church was growing, and how... People like Peter were being used to share the gospel, not just to Jewish people, but to other people. And now we're going to learn about Barnabas. So let's have our Bibles opened up to there and let's do a quick review of our Bible verse and the message that we did last week. So let's start with the Bible verse. Let's read that together. Let's read, uh, let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice and let them say among the nation, the Lord reigns. First Chronicles 16 31. I hope you guys know that the Lord reigns over all the earth, over our president, over all the leaders of the nation, over our government, that he is in control. Even over this pandemic, he is in control because he, when hardships come, he wants people to come to know the Lord, right? So he will allow hardships to come so that we can depend on God. It's actually a, a warning or a wake up call or just to reveal who God is. And sometimes when people get so comfortable and everything's grand and everything's dandy, a lot of people tend to forget about God. Remember in the Old Testament, that's what they did all the time. When, when things were are such a blessing, then they would just slowly start believing other idols, whether it was money or whether it was other religion, whether it's comfort, whether it was you know, success, you know, and they would forget about God. So God sometimes allow hardships. Like for us, it was the pandemic where we really needed to cling on to God. And I think many, many people through this pandemic became saved and experienced God. So I hope you guys, as we go over today, the gospel, that that is in your heart, that people need the Lord, that people need God. So last week we talked about how Paul, I'm sorry, how Peter had a dream and God was showing him that he is to cleanse all people, not just the Jewish people, but he wants to cleanse all people, all nations. And that's God's heart. His heart is to save the world. And he did that through Jesus, right? So Peter had to repent, realizing, wow, God, you're an amazing God that you gave your only son, Jesus, to die for everyone, not just for us, right? So what is the gospel? What is the gospel? And let's do a quick review of that. The gospel is the good news. Now, let's say that together. The gospel is the good news news and let's read that the gospel is the good news that god sent his son jesus into the world to rescue sinners so god sent his son jesus to rescue sinners you and i we are not perfect right we sin we want to do things our ways we want to hide things you know from our parents or from each other or we lie sometimes you know or we do things we don't want to share. So there's sin in our hearts. And Jesus knew that. God knew that. And rather than us being punished for it, right? He said, you know what? Jesus is going to die for that. So Jesus didn't die for how good you are, but how sinful we are. And that's the good news, guys. The good news is that we're not punished, but we're actually rescued. Because sins have not, not have we just been um, doing sin, but we also can be sinned against when people have hurt us, right? People have sinned against us. So, you know, only one that can rescue us from those feelings of guilt or shame or hurts or pains is only Jesus. And that's why Jesus came. So we're going to talk about this story about how Barnabas shares that gospel to many people. So let's read Acts chapter 11, verses 19. To 24 and now let's have your sermon notes ready and right next to you guys and with your pen so you can grab notes I mean grab notes, take some notes as you're uh, learning today's message so Acts chapter 11 verse 19 to 24 so let's read that 
Now those who have been scattered have, as a result of the persecution that started because of Stephen made their way as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except Jews. So here, the church was growing. Everyone was being scattered um, because the moment you know, Stephen was persecuted, remember he was stoned, right? God moved the churches. God blessed the churches through these losses, through these persecutions, right? That even though hardships were happening to these Christians, God was also allowing blessings to happen. And they were only speaking the word, which is the gospel, only to the Jewish people. But there were some of them, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who came to Antioch and began speaking to the Greeks, also proclaiming the good news about the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So, so few of the disciples, right, which we're going to find out, which one of them was Barnabas, was going to Antioch, the city of Antioch, and was sharing the gospel, not to just the Jewish people, but to the Greek people that lived there. And let's continue. 21. The Lord hand was with them, and a large number who believed turned to the Lord. So because of that, many people were saved. Many people knew that they were sinners and they needed someone to save them from all their guilt and shame. And they were hearing the good news and they were so excited, right? And verse 22, news about them reached the church in Jerusalem and they sent out Barnabas to travel as far as Antioch. So Barnabas heard, everyone heard, and Barnabas went there to see what was happening. And when he arrived and saw the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged all of them to remain true to the Lord with devoted hearts. So Barnabas came to Antioch and wanted to encourage everyone saying, wow, God is moving in this place. May you continually depend on the Lord and trust in him. It's like us as pastors and teachers saying to you guys, let's continually depend on God and trust in him. Just like Barnabas, let's, let's be blessed and let's be encouraged to one another that we do not give up on God, but we depend on him. Amen. Amen. So 24. And for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a large number of people were added to the Lord. So many people were added to the Lord, right? So many people. So Barnabas was so excited. He went to Antioch to encourage all the believers. And he said, I want to bless you guys. He was full of the Holy Spirit. God was speaking to him saying, this is truly from God. So this is another understanding that the gospel is for all nations, that that is God's heart, guys, that the message of the gospel isn't just for you and me, but he wants to spread it everywhere. And I hope and I pray that you will have that same heart, the same heart like God, that I want to share the gospel to my friends, to my family, or to the countries out there. And, you know, pray for a country that you're, you're worried about or that you want people to be saved, you know, especially North Korea or China. I've said these cities last week, but they're so important, right? So let's continue. Let's see what happens. So now Paul and Barnabas told, told the Jews and the Gentiles, both of them, about Jesus, right? So now both Jews and the Gentiles are being saved, that God is truly not just for the Jewish people, that God has no favoritism, and he doesn't pick and choose. It's, he spreads the gospel, and it's those that respond, you guys had probably had no choice to come to church, but it's actually God used your parents to bring you to church. And now it's our response to say, yes, Lord, I believe, right? Or no, I, want to, I, I need help. I want to believe. Will you help me to believe, right? And we would ask for the Holy Spirit to help us to believe. And that's the same thing It's going on here, that many people were being saved. So let's continue verses 25 to 30. Then he went to Tarsus to search for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year, they met with the church and taught large numbers. Disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. So this is the verse where the word Christian comes from, that they were the first ones called Christians. So in the place, in the city of Antioch, they were growing as disciples. They were just saved, but they were becoming followers of Jesus. It's one thing to say, I believe in you, Jesus. It's another to say, I want to follow you, Jesus, right? 
So that is saying that Jesus is the Lord of your life, that he has lordship, kingship over your life. That's why we say, Jesus, you are our king, because we trust in you, we depend on you. Do you guys depend on Jesus as your king? Do you depend on him as the Lord over your life? When things are going through hard times or things that you don't like are happening, do you just avoid it and just say, forget about it, it's not a big deal? Or do you just play video games? Or do you go in prayer and say, God, will you help me through this? I'm praying for my family or I'm praying for myself. You know, you guys are at a point at this age where you don't need your parents to tell you to go pray, right? Or go read the Bible. I mean, it's encouraging. Sometimes it's not encouraging because they're like, how come you're not praying? Or how come you're not reading the Bible? But it's actually a good reminder, you know, and we need those reminders. But it's better when you guys do it on your own, when no one tells you and you do it on your own because you want to read the Bible, because you want to pray. And when we need that, when we want to do that, we ask for the Holy Spirit to help us, right? But we do need pastors and our parents to bring those reminders because we need reminders too. Parents need reminders. That's why they have their pastors preaching to them, reminding them to pray to God and to be in God's word, right? So that's called a disciple. You and I are disciples of Christ. And here in this verse, it says that the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. So if you ever wanted to know where the word Christians came from, that word, it came from here in the story of, Anti in the, story of the people in Antioch. So let's continue to read. Verse 27, in those days, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them named Abigail stood up and predicted by the spirit that there would be a severe famine throughout the Roman world. This took place during the reign of Claudius. And each of the disciples, according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brothers and sisters who lived in Judea. And they did this, sending it to the elders by the means of Barnabas and Saul. So not only, you guys, do we see that the gospel was being preached? Do we see that the good news was being heard and that people were following Jesus and becoming disciples of Jesus? But they also started to get help and relief, right? Each of the disciples, according to his ability, determined to send relief, right? Relief is help to those brothers and sisters who lived in Judea. So whenever we do these things where it's a compassion or outreach or children's hunger fund, these are ways that we can help those who need help, right? So as a Christian, not only do we read the word, not only do we pray, but we do actions. We do things for others who are in need and we pray for them, but we also provide, right? So that is the heart of a Christian, right? So that is what the gospel is. That is what's happening in the church in the book of Acts. And I'm going to show you guys a video about the word gospel. What is the gospel? Where did it come from? And it's just to help us to really understand that the gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ who came to this world to rescue us. Do we have to work for salvation? Do we have to work for the gospel? No. Do we have to work? Do we have to be perfect in order to be saved by God? No, we don't. We follow God because we're safe. So when I say I believe in Jesus, I'm so grateful that I will obey. I'm so thankful that I want to pray. I'm so thankful that I want to read the Bible. It's not the other way around like, oh, I need to read the Bible in order to be, pray to be saved. Or I need to read, pray in order to be saved. You know, oh, I need to do good things. Then, you know, Jesus will like me and think, you know, I'm a good Christian. Jesus will like you no matter what, but he will save you when you say, I believe in you, Jesus, and I give my life to you. Amen? Amen. And that's the good news, guys, that we don't have to work for our salvation. There's so many religions out there that you have to work so hard, and yet you don't even know if you're going to go to heaven. But for us, we are so blessed because all we need to do is believe in Jesus and believe in his death and resurrection and say, I want, and, and in response, I will follow you. Then we know we are saved because we believe in him. It's our belief in Jesus that saves us. Amen. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this video and then we'll close in prayer. If you know any Christians or if you happen to be one, you've probably heard the word gospel as a kind of summary of Christian belief connected to phrases like, 
God loves you, or Jesus died for your sins. But over time, religious words like gospel can lose their power and meaning by becoming too familiar. So let's take a moment to rediscover what this important word, gospel, meant to the people who wrote the Bible. Gospel translates the Old Testament Hebrew verb, biser, and the noun, besora. The Greek New Testament equivalent is euangelion, which is a compound word. Eu means good, and angelion means announcement. All of these words mean good news, but what kind of news? Well, in Hebrew, biser is what we might call national news, or a royal announcement. Like when King David hears a messenger biser that his army was victorious in battle. That means he still rules on his throne over the people of Israel. And after David dies, his throne is passed on to Solomon, his son. And when he was inaugurated as king in Jerusalem, a herald spreads the besora that a new ruler is in charge. But after Solomon's death came a bunch of bad news kings whose corruption led their nation into self-destruction. This is why the prophet Isaiah announced the good news that one day the God of Israel would come as the cosmic king to confront all corrupt and violent kingdoms and restore his rule over all nations. And so when Jesus of Nazareth hit the public stage, he continued Isaiah's gospel when he went around announcing the euangelion of God's kingdom. Jesus claimed that God was restoring his reign over his people Israel and over all nations, and he was the one bringing it all about. Now, the euangelion about a new king in charge means a new way of life. Jesus said that living in God's kingdom meant following him by putting down the sword and seeking peace through radical forgiveness and generosity even toward your enemies. His good news required people to make a decision. This is why Jesus took his euangelion to Jerusalem to confront the corrupt and violent kingdoms of his day. But he challenged them in a surprising way with the power of God's generous love. As Jesus was being executed by his enemies, he received his crown and was mocked as a fake king. But he displayed true royal authority by forgiving his tormentors. Jesus was the one in charge that day, giving his life for the sins of others. And then, a few days later, everything changed. Jesus rose from the dead as the true king whose love is stronger than death. He appeared to hundreds of his followers and told them to spread the euangelion, that all authority in heaven on earth now belongs to him. And they did share this good news all over the ancient world. They did it by writing the four accounts of Jesus' life that are the gospel. That is, they tell the story of how Jesus brought God's kingdom, how he lived for others and died for their sins, and then was raised from the dead. Jesus' followers also shared the good news by simply talking about it. This is why Peter and Paul, or Priscilla and Aquila, traveled all around sharing the royal announcement. While it might look like the rulers of our world are in charge and can do whatever they want, the good news is that the crucified and risen Jesus is the true Lord of the world, the real king of all creation. And in Jesus' kingdom, things are different. It's where the real leaders are the servants, because the last are first and the first go to the back of the line. It's where the hungry are fed and the homeless are welcome, because love is the most powerful reality of God's kingdom. And this good news is not easy to believe. It actually sounds kind of crazy when you first hear it, but something happens when people tell the story of Jesus and start living like he really is the king of the world. That's when this gospel becomes the best news that you've ever heard. Well, that was such a good reminder of what the word gospel means. So let's wrap this time in prayer and let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this message about the gospel. We thank you that you came to save us and you came to love us and, and by dying on the cross for us, God. And we just pray that you'd use Kids Church Two Kids and me as well to share the gospel, to pray for others that are not saved, to bless those who are weak and poor, Lord God. And thank you, Lord, that you love us, not because of how perfect we are, because you came to die when we were sinners. And we, Lord, we thank you for that, for that is good news. And Father, may we have a thankful heart for the gospel, a joyful heart, for we are truly saved only by you, Jesus, and not by ourselves. 
We thank you, Lord, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I will see you guys at one o'clock today. Have a wonderful week. And I hope you guys will seek the Lord and trust in him and be in his word each day. Amen. Amen. All right. See you next week, guys. Bye.